In this video, I'll play for you my easy piano version of Nocturne number 20 by Chopin. Hi everyone, welcome to the Piano Keys. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Marina and I help people all over the world achieve their piano goals without years of lessons. In this video, I'll play for you my easy piano version of Chopin's Nocturne Number no. 20, originally in C sharp minor. If you want to jump right to the music because you're curious to hear it, and then you want to come back to hear what I've got to say, you can go to this time link. I have a lot of Chopin tutorials in my Chopin playlist because Chopin is basically like the quintessential uh, piano composer. His music to me and to many people is the most pianistic out of all of the composers. Chopin really knew how to, how to write for the piano and how to capture um, all the colors and the effects that the piano could make. And so I think that's one of the reasons why he is so popular still. His nocturnes are some of the most beautiful pieces. They're quite short and they all follow generally the same guidelines, which is they're in ABA form. That means that they present a theme called the A section and then they go to a contrasting theme called the B section and then they come back to the A section, the first theme. The nocturnes also have an accompaniment pattern in the left hand that's pretty consistent, which is a broken chord or an arpeggio accompaniment and the right hand generally plays kind of like a singing lyrical melody almost like a bel canto song. The nocturnes also use the pedal in a way to add a lot of depth and texture and resonance to the sound of the music. Now even though Chopin's nocturnes are the most famous nocturnes that we know, he actually wasn't the first person to compose nocturnes. The first composer who created the genre was actually an Irish composer named John Field. Not to be confused with John Field, who was in the Australian rock band called The Cockroaches, <laughs> and also a songwriter for the children's music group called The Wiggles. The John Field that we're talking about uh, actually lived from 1782 to 1837. Now Field was considered a great composer by his contemporaries and he influenced a lot of really famous composers that came after him like Chopin and Brahms and Schumann and Liszt. Chopin was a pretty big fan of John Field but John Field didn't return the feeling for some reason and if you want to know did they ever meet in person? I will tell you that at the end of this video. So a nocturne is a short lyrical piece, generally for the piano, and it evokes the nighttime, or kind of like a sad, melancholy feel. Chopin wrote 21 nocturnes in about a 20 year period between 1827 and 1846. And even though he wrote the Nocturnes 19 and 21st, they actually weren't released until after his death, which means that they were posthumously released. So posthumous means after the person has died. Even though it looks like posthumous, <laughs> we can say posthumous. The word nocturne isn't just a musical term. It was also used in painting, notably by the painter James Abbott McNeil Whistler. And he used the term nocturne to describe a style of painting that depicts nighttime scenes or subjects that appear to be in twilight or um, in the absence of direct light. So Whistler lived from 1834 to 1903 and he was born in the United States but he actually got his training all over the world and he related painting to music which is pretty cool. If you think about it Art forms are not isolated, so um, they feed into one another like dance and music and sculpture and painting and all of these arts are related. So just like in the Impressionist genre, we have Impressionist music and Impressionist visual art, uh, we also have nocturnes that can be music or paintings. And Whistler incorporated musical ideas into his 
paintings, not by painting you know, music notes and things like that, but by actually titling his compositions by calling them nocturnes or symphonies or compositions or arrangements or harmonies. You could look at one of these paintings and imagine hearing one of Chopin's nocturnes playing at the same time. The painting that Whistler is most known for um, is known as Whistler's Mother, but he called it Arrangement in Gray and Black Number 1. So originally, the nocturne that I'm going to play for you in this video is written in C-sharp minor, and even though when you look at the sheet music, it doesn't look like it's really hard to play, you know that Chopin actually didn't really write any easy pieces. <laughs> I do have a video here where I talk about some of his easier pieces and why if you're a more beginner pianist, you should go ahead and learn them. I also have a tutorial for the E minor prelude, which you can see here. And I have an easy piano version of the very famous Nocturne Opus 9 number no. 2, which you can see here. I have a tutorial for that and a performance. So the reason that I make easy piano versions of these great works of music is because I want to make music accessible to people who don't study it, you know, really in a deep way for many, many years. I think that classical music especially can add so much richness to our daily lives. And so I want everyone who wants to learn to have an access point. So if you're a purist and you think that these easy piano versions are silly, you have every right to your opinion. I don't agree with you. I think that classical music is for everybody. And that's why I make tutorials to help people at least start learning the piano from somewhere that they want to start. So a piece that they want to learn. Now, if you want to play difficult pieces and you find that you're having a hard time, there are reasons for that. Probably your technique isn't where it needs to be in order to handle these pieces. So I've made courses for you to level up on your technique. You can see them here. You might need to learn how to read music because uh, reading music actually isn't just about recognizing notes. What it's doing is it's preparing your mind to have um, a musical knowledge and an ability to process uh, musical information. So it's not just a matter of reading music, but it's like teaching yourself how to be a musician when you learn how to read music. I have courses for that as well. All the links are below this video. So in this easy piano version of Nocturne number 20, I changed the key so you're not reading a bunch of sharps and playing a lot of black keys. I changed the left hand to be simpler and I simplified the right hand melody and ornamentation like the fancy runs and stuff. I made them much easier to play. I do have the sheet music linked below. You can go and get that even if you don't read sheet music because when I release the tutorial, you'll have like a map to follow that will help you to retain the information that you get from the tutorial. When I do have a tutorial, you'll see the link for it in the description box. I'll also put it in the comments. Another thing I did for this easy piano version is I took out the B section, the middle section. It's gorgeous and of course it's an important part of the piece, but um, what happens is Chopin changes the time signature, basically the counting between the A section and the B section. And um, if I were to do that, then this piece wouldn't be as easy to play and understand. So I left it out. Um, it was a tough choice to make, but I, I made it. And I think that it was the right choice to make because this version still retains like the gorgeous melody that everybody is familiar with. It doesn't sacrifice the spirit of the music, but again, it makes it accessible for people who are not advanced pianists. So if you are ready to hear my easy piano version of Chopin's 20th Nocturne, then keep watching.
Join my private Facebook group, Piano Practice Tips with the Piano Keys. You have to answer all the questions and agree to the group rules. We share a lot of、um, tips with each other, and people post videos of themselves playing, and we give lots of encouragement and support. And I help wherever I can. I also have a Facebook page called the Piano Keys, and you can follow that just to keep up to date on what's going on. Sometimes I post to Instagram, the Piano Keys TPK, and my website has a lot of resources for you to get better at piano. Go check it out. Lots of tutorials, courses, sheet music, all that sort of thing. Now I said that I would tell you whether or not John Field and Chopin ever met. The answer is yes, they did. Chopin and John Field did meet. And、um, it's unclear what they talked about, but Chopin got to meet his idol of sorts. Keep practicing, have fun, and I will see you soon. Bye.